Hello and welcome to another MLearn vidcast. This time we'll be looking at the iPod as it's used in education. Of course there's many many different ways and we'll be trying to detail quite a few of the different ones that are available. iPods in education is a very hot topic at the moment. There are schools that are buying them. Other people who are saying that it's a waste of um, money that could be spent on other computer devices. I just wanted to mention before we start that we need to set the volume, the master volume limit on your iPods. Kids do have sensitive hearing and uh, it is a big issue as far as them losing their hearing early these days so that needs to be set. This review is going to talk about the iPod Classic but most of the education applications we'll be talking about can be used also on the fifth generation iPod as well as the, the new third generation Nano and of course the iPhone and the iPod Touch. Classic course features new interface, a sleeker design, all the sort of things that Apple's been advertising and the biggest one that gets a lot of eye candy attention is of course the cover flow function that's been added to where you can browse your albums just by looking at the covers and the click wheel makes a good way to do that. Here's uh, what it looks like in real life. Fairly responsive. It does take a about a second or so to load up when you first start it though. Okay, the first educational use we'll look at is um, putting audiobooks onto your iPod. Now of course that's a fantastic way to listen and there are a lot of kids who require learning support um, who might be better off listening to stories at least um, initially to get them going. So this is how they function. Uh, you simply select the book and then the chapter and um, it'll play. One of the really good other features about it is though that once you've finished a session, even if you're halfway through a chapter or something like that, it is very easy um, to access the resume function. You can also skip along through the different parts. There's the resume function there. Okay, it is possible to add your own audiobooks though, not just ones purchased from the iTunes store. These are some audio files I've de found on the internet um, that are copyright free that you can download and add them yourself so that you can build up your own collection. There's um, nothing stopping you from doing that. Apart from the audiobooks playing, there's also a setting where you can change for slower, normal or faster, which might come in handy if you're going time with dealing with time constraints. Okay, let's look at games now. Now, normally you don't associate games with education, but the iPod um, is unique in that it comes now with a game called iQuiz. And that's what we'll be looking at. There are other games, of course, that you can get, which are more on the fun side of things. Um, so let's um, go now to one of my favourite websites, Learning in Hand, um, which has a fantastic section on iPods and education. There's the address there. And we're going to be specifically looking at um, Learning in Hand section on quizzes, just to show you what's possible on the iPod. Here we go. Okay, this section um, lists quite a few different options. And the first one we're going to talk about is the iQuiz program, the game that comes with each um, iPod now. It's also called iPod Quiz and used to be called just iQuiz. There's a program that you can get as well, a free program called iQuiz Maker. allows you to make up your own ones, which for educators, of course, is a great arrangement. Here's the website here. Um, very easy to find the program and download it. And there are also quite a few sites where people have made up quizzes that you can download without having to create your own. Plenty of different categories there. Okay. Let's click on maths. And have a look at the four times tables. Gives you a, a bit of a sample there of the sort of questions that you'll be getting. And it's a, so here's the actual application itself, iQuizMaker. You can have a good little preview once you've created your own, this is a preview of course of the one I tried downloaded. This is what it basically will look like on the iPod screen as the game is playing. This is a, the true false version. There are others where you can um, have multiple choice to choose the answers as well. As you can see it's quite a nice graphical representation. It's going to keep kids interested. It allows the kids also to save their score you can talk about averages and all kinds of things from here, the percentages. This would lead on to other math lessons as well. 
So once you've um, copied it across to your iPod, you just need to synchronize and then you're ready to look at it on the iPod itself. So let's open up iPod Quiz here. All the various options, this is the iPod Quiz menu. And we'll start a new game where we have a look at the math quizzes that we've loaded on. So here there's a few different options. We're going to um, look at one of these. And here it loads, it has a nice little starting flash screen. And we're into the true or false questions. This is what happens when you answer them wrong. It does give you the correct answer after afterwards. And nothing wrong. Seven times five equals thirty-five. That one's true, but we did have too many wrong answers. Gives you your score. There's some good opportunities here to work out things like percentages. Okay, now onto another program called Quizler. Now this is a little bit older than um, the actual iQuiz game that comes with the iPod. It's some um, a program that is available to make quizzes for all kinds of different devices the iPod just being one of them um, you can download a Quizler reader for free or the actual program to make your own has a demo and that's what we're looking at here this lets you preview a whole list of questions so you can have a look through if this is one you were making yourself you could edit these and once you've got a quiz that's all ready to go. It's quite easy to export it out of Quizler. And you can see there's different options here. If we select the iPod one, we'll just do four questions for this um, test export. You send it to your iPod and it shows up in the notes section. So it basically creates a series of linkable note screens with different hyperlinks that you can navigate through. And um, that's how it gets onto your iPod. Here's um, just some examples of what the screens will look like. The underlying parts are the hyperlinks. Okay. Another way of getting quizzes onto your iPod is um, using StudyMate. Now this is a paid program. Again, we're just using a demo here. StudyMate uh, again is available for many different mobile platforms, but it will export to your iPod and create quizzes in the notes form, just like Quizler, or also will export to the iQuiz game. This is a the demo software demo, which um, just shows you what the flashcards look like, because there is one other way that StudyMate will export, and that's to photos on your iPod, the photo section. So it will store all these different flashcards as images, and allow you to navigate through them just like you would a slideshow. You can also have flip cards, so you have it's like having the answer on the back and this is for I guess helping students to revise for assignments that sort of thing okay so you can select iPod quiz and um, iPod notes there this is for exporting I just had to put in where what to save it and where it was going to be and off it goes once it's created you sync it to your iPod and here it is showing up in the photo section so there's all the different cards which are just photo images we can select them and start working your way through the fact cards so this could just be for memorizing facts you can select through the different cards like, like so um, with the ability to store hundreds really of um, photo images as flash cards um, have no trouble getting plenty of revising done. This just shows you the flashcards that you can flip to have the answer on the back. Here it comes. Here's the answer. And we'll look at another one as well. And you can flip it to find the answer. So, again, very good way of revising. It's something that's mobile, you can take this anywhere. It doesn't matter if you're on a train, a bus, traveling, etc. Um, students can access that as well as in the classroom. And here's an example of how the study made exports to an iPod quiz game. 
you can just see the study mate logo there otherwise it's exactly the same as the rest of the game now this is just in a new brain challenge game is hit the iTunes store a little bit like the brain games famous for the Nintendo DS I guess it's the iPod version all kinds of different uh, puzzles and it'll give you an age for your brain at the end okay